Hello friends, welcome back to another session of data structures. Uh, in today's class, I'll be discussing collision resolution techniques. Uh, so what is collision? Collision is when two keys map to the same index of the hash table, then we call it as collision. So there are various ways in which like we can resolve collisions. Okay, so the first one is open hashing and the second one is closed hashing. Open hashing is also called as closed addressing and closed hashing is also called as open addressing. So in today's class, I'll be discussing double hashing and it comes under the category of closed hashing. The difference between open hashing and closed hashing is that in uh, closed hashing, we'll be actually performing a probe. Uh, the, uh, whenever there is collision, the key will be mapped to another index. Okay, So we'll be looking for another uh, empty slot in the hash table rather than uh, using another data structure to link like in the open hashing. In the open hashing, like we'll be putting a chain uh, of, which is nothing but your linker list uh, uh, in the same index. But here in the closed hashing, we won't be doing that. We'll be putting the value in the same um, table itself, looking for an empty slot in the hash table. So let us try to find out like how double hashing is performed. So as I already mentioned, a collusion in the context of the hash table occurs when two distinct keys produce the same hash value, resulting in them being mapped to the same index in the hash table. Okay, so this situation can arise due to the finite size of the hash table relative to the potentially infinite set of keys that maybe need to be stored in the hash table. So that is collision. And uh, as I said, like double hashing is one of the closed uh, uh, hashing techniques. So in double hashing, what we generally do is, uh, so we'll be having a primary hash function. So this is the primary hash function. The choice of the hash function can be your wish, okay? But we just need to make sure that uh, the hash function possesses certain characteristics. I have discussed about the characteristics of the hash function in my previous video. So you can just watch that and come back here if you didn't. So primary hash function uh, is the hash function we'll be using uh, to map the keys uh, onto the hash table, okay? So the hash function uh, generally will be like, uh, key mod table size uh, so key is the key uh, that we or the uh, that we want to map onto the hash table and then the table size generally will be a prime number so in case of collision only we will be using the secondary hash function okay so when there is collision only we will be using the secondary hash function and the secondary hash function is like this h2 of k uh, key uh, is equal to r minus t mod r where here r stands for a prime number which is less than the table size so say for example if the table size is 11 okay so here r will be a prime number which is less than 11 it could be 5 or it could be 7 or so on okay right uh, so we should be saying 7 minus key mod 7 okay so if the table size is 11 generally we'll be picking r as a prime number so uh, in case of collusion what we'll do is we'll calculate h1k and we also will calculate h2k and then we'll be putting up in this particular formula, okay? So we'll say H1K plus I into H2K mod table size. Now, what is I over here? So I is the number of collisions. So if it is the first collision, then we'll be keeping I to be one. And if there is one more collision, we'll be incrementing it to be two and so on. It's the number of collisions that have occurred, okay? Right, so uh, what we'll do is we'll keep increasing the I uh, till we find an empty slot in the hash table. Right, so this is double hashing. Let us take a look at how to do double hashing with an example. So here uh, we'll try to see how to insert the keys uh, 21, 32, 14, 7, 9, 11, and 18 into the hash table. Uh, so the hash functions that I have taken, the primary hash function that I have taken is key mod 7. And the secondary hat hash function that I have taken is 5 minus key mod 5. So as I told you that uh, R should be uh, a prime number, which is less than the table size. So table size here is seven. So, uh, so a prime number, which is less than the table size is five. So we have taken five. You can also take three and so on. Okay, but here I have taken it to be five. Um, so these are the primary and the secondary hash functions. And uh, uh, so since the table size is seven, so I'll be taking an array. Uh, with the index numbers from 0 to 6. Okay, so this is our hash table. So let us try to map this into the hash table. So the first one is 21. 
so 21 mod 7. So we'll be doing this. Uh, so 21 mod 7 is 0. So uh, we got an index value, which is 0. Okay, So this is the index number on the array where we need to put 21. So at 0, I'll be putting 21. So 21 went into a location, which is uh, 0 index. Okay, So let us try to see how to put the next one. So the next one is uh, 32, okay? So 32 mod 7. So here, as you have observed uh, that while I was mapping 21 mod 7, so I didn't take into consideration the second hash function, okay? Because um, the, uh, the I, I directly got the empty slot, okay? So there is no collision occurred here. I directly got the empty slot. So I just inserted 21 in zero, okay? So I'll be considering the second hash function only in case when there is collision. So I want all of you to, to note that point. So uh, 32 mod seven. So here I'll be getting four. Um, so I'll just look into whether index number four is empty. So index number four is empty. So we'll be inserting 32 over here, okay? Right. Uh, so, so, so far we didn't get any collusion. We'll see whether we'll get in, uh, uh, in this element. Okay, so 14 mod 7 is equal to 0. So now there is collusion. So we'll be setting i is equal to 1. Okay, so when there is a collusion, so we'll be setting i to be 1. So now uh, the first uh, primary hash function have, uh, didn't work for us. So we just need to go to the second hash function. So what's the second hash function? So the secondary hash function is five minus, what is the key? Key is 14, so 14 mod five. Okay, so let us see what is 14 mod five. 14 mod five is four, right? So five minus four is giving me one, okay? So now what we need is, uh, so I got H1K, so H1K is zero and H2K is one. So substitute in the formula, so which I have told you that, which is H1K, H1K is zero. So zero plus what is i, i is equal to one, one into, so what is the secondary hash function result? That is one. So one into one, so which is modulus the table size. What is the table size? The table size is seven. So which is zero plus one and mod seven. Okay, so one mod seven, which is nothing but one. So where did we get? We get, we got the index number to be one and just check whether one is empty or not. So one is empty over here, okay? So we'll just place 14 over here. So 14 comes into this slot. So what's the next element that we need to insert? The next element is seven, right? So we'll be seeing seven mod seven, seven mod seven is resulting in a zero. So check the uh, zero index. So zero index is already full. So there is collusion. So set your i, i is equal to one, okay? So now we'll take the secondary hash function. So the secondary hash function is five minus, what is the key that we want to insert? Okay, so which is seven, seven mod five. Okay, so seven mod five is giving me a two. So I have five minus two, which is giving me three. Okay, so now that I have the results of uh, H1K and H2K, so we'll be substituting that. Okay, so which is zero plus, what is your I? I is one, one into what is your H2K, which is three. So zero plus three is equal to three B mod the table size. What is the table size? The table size is seven. Okay, so three mod seven will result me in three. Okay, so where do this seven go? So seven will go at index number three. Okay, so now we have mapped seven also onto the table. Uh, so what is the key now? Uh, so the key now is nine. So which is nine mod seven. So nine mod seven is giving us a two. So so where do nine go? Nine go into the index number two because two is empty. So it's an empty slot. So directly you can insert nine. So there is no collision for nine now. So we'll see how to insert the next uh, key. The next element to insert is 11. So 11 mod seven is giving us a four, so there is a collision here. So we'll take the secondary hash function. So which is five minus key, key is what? 11, 11 mod five, okay? So 11 mod five has given us one. So five minus one is equal to four. So both the hash functions have given us a four. So let us substitute to calculate the slot. So which is four plus, what is your collision? So we have a collision, so which is set i to be one. So one into four. Okay, and the whole mod, the table size, which is nothing but seven. So four plus four, which is eight, eight mod seven is giving us a one. So check what uh, whether uh, one slot is empty. So one slot is not empty. 
so we there is collision once again so we are setting i to 2 so let us uh, calculate the slot once again by setting i to be 2 so 4 plus 2 into 4 okay so the whole mod 7 uh, so this is 4 plus uh, which is 8 8 plus 4 which is 12 12 mod 7 so 12 mod 7 is giving us a 5 okay so uh, we will be checking whether 5 is empty. So, S yes, it is an empty slot. So, where do 11 go? 11 go into this particular index, which is 5. Okay, right. So, now we'll see how to put 18 into the slot. So, what's the last element? So, the last element is... Uh, So what's the last element? The last element is 18. So 18 mod 7. So 18 mod 7 is giving us a 4. Okay. So 4 is already full. So what we'll do, we'll take the secondary hash function. So which is nothing but 5 minus what's the key? Key is 18. So 18 mod 5. So 18 mod 5 is giving us a 3. So 5 minus 3 is giving us 2. So since there is collision, we have set our i to be 1. So let us uh, calculate the slot. So which is nothing but 4 plus 1 into 2. Uh, so for which is nothing but 4 plus 2, which is 6 mod 7. Okay. So 6 mod 7 is giving us a 6. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll check whether 6 index is empty. Yes, 6 index, index is empty. So we'll place 18 over here. Okay. Right. This is how the double hashing works. Uh, so this is the definition of the load factor. So the load factor is a metric used to measure the fullness or the occupancy of the data structure. So which is like the hash table. Uh, so it represents the ratio of the number of stored elements to the total number of uh, slots available in the hash table. So we generally give the load factor formula alpha uh, as n by m. So where uh, n is the total number of uh, elements that are there in the hash table, like the entries that we made in the hash table. And m is the total number of slots that are uh, uh, given for us okay, in the hash table. Like the size of the table is nothing but m uh, over here. So in the previous case, like we saw that uh, 7 is the table size, right? So um, if there are five elements in the table, so what we'll do is n is considered to be five because there are five entries in the hash table and seven is the table size. Okay, so when we do this, like it comes around 71 or so. So this kind of uh, ratio, okay, so when it reaches like this kind of ratio, so it means that your table is full and there are chances that uh, you won't be finding uh, empty slots. And there will be a lot of collisions that will occur at this particular point of time. So we, uh, we, we for storing the element itself, like we'll be taking a lot of time, which is like very costly in terms of insertion and deletion. So in that case, what we'll do is when the load factor will be like more than 70, so we'll try to increase the capacity of the hash table. Generally, we'll be doubling the size of the hash table. Okay, so that we'll be finding empty slot easily. So I hope double hashing is very clear to you. Um, thank you for watching.